Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, my social thread. My name's Crystal and today um, is going to be my first Friday Sews vlog, uh, which is basically me um, updating you on what I've been up to sewing wise over the past week. Also, just to say that the last time I spoke about my YouTube subscribers, um, I was at 280 subscribers and today I think I'm on about 480. So I'd like to say a big, big thank you to everybody um, who has come to watch my channel, uh, to my new subscribers, welcome and to my returning subscribers. Thank you very much for coming back. So, what have I been up to this week? I've been very, very busy, actually. Uh, first of all, I'll tell you what I'm wearing. This is a new make, which I made, I believe, yesterday. Again, I'm terribly sorry. It is a Tilly and the Buttons Billy sweatshirt, uh, yet again. Um, and it is, I have done uh, the same versions I normally do. So, the normal shoulder, um, and then the um, billowy, puffy bishop sleeves with the, with the deep cuff. And I have done this in a lovely um, French terry, which is like a off-white background, lovely vintage floral print there. Um, and I've taken the um, dark colour of this rose, the dark pink colour, and I've used uh, matching cuffing for the dark rose, but obviously a contrasting cuffing to, to the rest of the, of the fabric. And that fabric is from Jelly Fabrics. Um, in addition to that billy, I have actually made another billy. I will show you this one here. Again, this is fabric from Jelly Fabrics, which I've shown you before. And it's in this lovely dark, dusky pink um, leopard print um, and matching um, cuffing there. And I've also got a lovely label that says handmade. And that label is from this is for makers and the fabric and ribbing for this is from jelly fabrics as well the other thing that i've been up to is i have cut out um the my toile for my burda coat pattern and i have just used some inexpensive linen look um fabric that i've got here and this is one of the pattern pieces so I will still need to, that's all cut out now, I need to base that together, try it on, and make sure it's a good fit, make the alterations if I need to, and then hopefully I can cut into my precious Ted Baker fabric and the lining for that coat. So I will keep you updated on that. Hopefully next week I will be able to show you a bit more of the progress of that coat. Um, what's next? Okay, next also I did show on Instagram a snapshot of a beautiful um, box, um, a DIY bag kit um, that I received as a gift from my husband. This is from the company Bags um, bagsandpieces.co and I came across them um, when I was watching... Um, Romana from um, Romana the little pomegranate is an Instagram handle so she has been gifted a bag from this company um, and they do lovely amazing quality leather bags and they're in kits so you can actually make the bag up yourself which I quite like the idea of and going back to Romana she's obviously one of the, she was one of the finalists of the British um, Great, Great British Sewing Bee and that's where I first came across this company um, and I and I went and ordered one straight away. So this is the beautiful box here. Um, I have showed a close-up picture on Instagram. But I mean, when I opened it, just the beauty of the box alone, I'll show you close-up. I don't know if you can see that sort of linen look fabric on the box. Um, and so it's a dusky pink um, linen look fabric. Uh, box sorry and then the insert is like a burgundy draw insert and when I posted it on Instagram the company actually replied to say that not only is the box beautiful the reason the box is so beautiful is because it was manufactured by a German family-owned bookbinding um, business so they um they have you know they have put, they have made this you know hand handmade this lovingly and also the paper that was used um is from the oldest um the oldest paper in germany apparently and it's in a place called to Jernsey by the alps so i think that even adds even more beauty to the um to the quality of the product and that's just the box we've not even opened it yet so i am going to open it um so inside uh, beautifully wrapped in burgundy tissue paper you've got their branded sticker there so it's bags and pieces.co um, a lovely uh, postcard there imagine create repeat and a little message at the back and I will open it let me see what's in here 
Ta-da! So, I will put it down and I'll try and show you what's inside. So basically, the bag that I went for, I will pop up a picture of the bag. And then I'll show you the pieces that you get in it. So this is the colour of the leather that I've chosen. I don't know if it's coming up too well on the camera, but it's basically like a blush nude colour. Uh, and the beauty, I mean, this leather is just so soft and supple. And it... It smells, it smells divine. So that's the colorway that I went for. This I assume is, is the bottom sort of gusset of the bag. And then you've got the whole pre-made holes here for the straps to attach to. So you get all the leather pieces. Let me just go through it with you. So all these lovely leather pieces, that's the flap of the bag. So you get all the leather pieces. Um, I think this is like a sanding, sanding um, square. Um, you get the um, the glue, leather glue to, to, to glue the bag together and then you stitch it up and then this is the edging paint that you get. So where you've joined two pieces of leather together, for example, where you've joined two pieces of leather together and you've glued that and sewn it together, uh, this bit here you would need to paint with this so that it's the same colour as the outer of the leather just to give it that lovely professional quality finish. Um, what else do you have in here? Uh, you get a little bag or oh, you get some tools a little bag I'll just open that and inside you have the little brush for the glue um, I'm not sure what this tool does but um, maybe that helps you thread it through the thread the, th uh, the thread through the the pre-made holes in the leather <gasps> lovely thread here it's in a lovely colorway slightly more see if the leather then that's the colorway with uh, three three needles there what else do you have oh um just some little clips to hold the leather together whilst you're gluing and sewing them together um a piece of beeswax i assume that is uh because you would need to rub that against the thread before threading it through before stitching your bag together um there's another little bag here oh i know what this is and this is the hardware that you get with the bag so you get the buckle and it's just got some clear plastic film on there and you get the strap so it's like a gold um, hardware strap um, and the little fixings and fixtures little um, buckles for the ends and the little tiny screwdriver so basically if you go onto their website i will link it down below you've got a choice quite a few choices of um color of leather and not only can you choose the color but you can also choose the finish so i went for like i said the um I think it's the blush or the nude um, and I went for the smooth um, finish you can also get like a mottled finish which is quite nice if that's what you prefer in terms of the hardware you can choose between gold silver and also they do fabric um, fabric straps that you can choose uh, that you can that you can yeah that you can choose um, and it's a lovely website and also if you're not sure about what um, color um leather you want to go for if you just email them they will show you swatches of your different of the different choices that you want uh, to choose from and then you can easily compare compare them with each other so i think that's quite nice um nice service that they do uh, and just to say this bag is i am going to make it up i have two weddings to go to one at the end of april one at the end of march and i'll be wearing that bag uh, for for those weddings so hopefully i can get that made up if not by the end of this month then definitely by the end of april because the wedding the first wedding is at the end of April so that's that that's from bagsandpieces.co um, and I'll put that one aside uh, the next thing that I've been up to is I received my fabric for my so recreate the look 22 and um, if you have watched my recent vlog I did um, reveal that I am going to make this Bowden dress here so I'll pop up a picture and the pattern that I'm going to use for that is the Tilly and the Buttons Lyra. And the fabric that I chose um, is this beautiful, um, is it Megan Isabella? Megan Isabella fabric for Narita Hansen. Megan Isabella designed Narita Hansen fabric. And it's a cotton linen base. And I'll just show you if I step back. So it's a beautiful drape, but it's um, it, it will iron really nicely because it's got the linen content in it and it will also hold its shape as well. But it's got a beautiful drape there and just the colours and the print. 
Um, you've got bumblebees, flowers, different leaves. I think also there is, oh, there you go. There's a ladybird there as well. Where's the ladybird? Oh, there's a ladybird there as well. And this fabric uh, was from Sew Me Sunshine. Um, it, it was quite expensive. It was on sale when I went to the website. It was, I think from 12 pounds per half a meter it was only 10 pounds per half a meter and then they were doing their 10 percent off as well because they couldn't go to the stitch festival and so Sony sunshine just did a 10 percent off everything in their store so that's when i grabbed that but i mean how beautiful is that the drape um and also i did um contact Sony sunshine and i said um do you think i could have a photo or a video of what the drape looks like and what the scale of the fabric looks like and they emailed me back with a lovely um a lovely video um ex doing exactly what i'm doing here but it's nice because then you could see exactly what you were buying um and i'm very very happy with that so that still needs to go to get pre-washed and then i can start cutting out uh, my lyra um, and then the next thing um, I was that I've been doing is uh, my entry for the so yellow for endo challenge. Now, in my previous vlogs, I was going to keep my entry for this challenge and my so frugal challenge a secret because for some reason I thought that they were going to be submitted on the same date and so I could reveal that together. But obviously, they're not going to be revealed in the same date. So yellow for endo. And so recreate the look 22. The reveal date for that is the 26th of March. And the so frugal 22 reveal is on the 30th of um, 30th of March. So therefore, I can't keep that a secret because they're being revealed on, on separate days anyway. So now all my plans have changed. I've had to do a quick rejig over what patterns I'm going to use, what fabric I'm going to use, that sort of thing. And what I've ended up with looking um, in my fabric stash, I've got this beautiful, again, this is a cotton linen mix. Um, and it, it's a mustard cotton linen mix in a polka dot um, print. And this is from Lamazi Fabrics. I bought this probably about a year ago. Uh, this was a present from my husband for my birthday and I have it in two other colourways as well, a navy and a deep red. So I thought that was quite nice. And to be honest, when I when I bought it, it did say mustard, uh, but I do know mustard ob obviously comes in lots of different shades. This is a bit brighter than I was hoping um, because I don't really think yellow suits me that much. I'm not sure. I think it is a bit bright. Um, but at least it's not bright, bright yellow. It is kind of a dark, a dark yellow. So anyway, the drape is lovely on that. But again, it's got the linen mix. So it will hold shape as well. And it will iron really nicely. It will press really nicely. And the pattern I have chosen um, to pair with that fabric is... You will be surprised. It is not the Lyra dress. <laughs> I do feel a bit bad that everything I've been showing you recently has either been the Lyra dress or the Billy sweatshirt. So I am sorry. I will try and diversify for you. So the pattern I have chosen is the Adeline wrap dress and top from Forget Me Not Patterns. I will show you that one there. And basically it you can have the blouse version here. The blouse version and or the dress version you can choose between short sleeves and three quarter length sleeves you can also have pleats in the sleeves if you want to but the main detail of this particular pattern are the pleats at the waist and if I show you the picture inside it's the pleats at the back as well and I just think that looks gorgeous, the pleats at the back. Um, on their website, I will pop up a picture. Um, and I think it looks great in plain fabrics. Um, linen um, is a good one. And chambray, because I think you can see the, the pleats really, really nicely. Um, obviously, I couldn't do a chambray or a... Well, I didn't have anything else. Um, and I, it needed to be yellow because of the challenge. So that's what I've chosen. Hopefully, because it is um, quite a crisp fabric, I can um show off the the pleat detail of that dress quite nicely so that's that one i've cut out the pattern pieces already for that it's all here and i just need to cut out the fabric and get that started um what else have i been up to so i have bought, bought um, a couple of things um i have bought this um clapper is a millwood clapper um and a, a, pre a point presser or turner presser 
and this is especially for my um, my birder coat so I know that um, some people that have uh, made coats at home um, the the seams uh, t t tend to be quite uh, bouncy because they've not been pressed well or they've not been pressed professionally, say at a dry cleaners, for example. But this actually assists you in getting the crisp seams. So basically what happens when you do uh, press the seams of your coat, um, so you press the seams of your coat and then you put this on top of the seam and you allow the, uh, the seams to set under this clapper. So it's a heavy wooden clapper and the clapper is uh, I guess in theory it sucks away all the moisture from the from the seam and it allows the seam to set nice and flat so this is obviously good for any um, fabric that has wool content in it um, and that was recommended by um, lots of vloggers actually um, Guthrie and Garney they do their own one and she re um, Lauren definitely recommends uh, the, uh, getting a clapper for coat making and I thought since the fabric I keep going on about this fabric since the fabric is so precious that Ted Baker let me pull it out for you that Ted Baker herringbone fabric which I got from uh, Rainbow Fabrics Kilburn since it's so precious I thought I should really try and do um, it justice by treating it well and getting the tools necessarily necessary to to make a beautiful coat and also obviously now that I have that tool if this coat goes well um, I would like to make more coats um, one coat for my daughter and maybe just other coats and just I won't be scared of coat making anymore hopefully so that's that's one purchase also um, I don't know if I if um, you remember I was having problems with my overlocker and I was hoping to get a, an upgrade because I just thought I can't fix this overlocker, nothing's working. And lo and behold, it was just the blades that were really blunt. So I just bought some um, some replacement blades um, and it works perfectly. So I'm very, very happy about that because I do use my overlocker um, every time I sew pretty much. So it is a useful piece of equipment and it is a necessary piece of equipment uh, with what I do. Um, and then the last thing that I've been up to is I have just sewn, um, I have just um, filmed my Sew Frugal 22 vlog um, and mine is due to be released on the 20th of March. So that's all ready to go. So I've set it on YouTube as um, you can preset the release date. So it's going to be released at 12 a.m. midnight on the 20th of March. That will be ready for you to watch. Um, and I've taken a different um, a different angle at the um, So Frugal 22 challenge. So hopefully you'll enjoy that. Um, and the last thing, sorry. Um, today I received my So Haley Jane box, the classic box. I've never subscribed before, so I'm a first time subscriber. And in fact, it's my first subscription box ever. The only other thing I have subscribed to in the past were the sewing magazines, which I then stopped after a couple of months because I just really wasn't using the... Um, the patterns that came with it. Um, so my first So Heady Jane um, unboxing, I decided to go a different um, route in unboxing it in the sense that I um, got the help of my seven-year-old daughter, Anya. Um, so that's on my YouTube channel as well. It's a very short one. It's about six and a half minutes. And it was our first go at, at doing it. I couldn't re... Um, I couldn't refilm it, stop and pause, because obviously the box had been unopened already, so I couldn't repack it and open it again. Um, but now that we've done it, my, my daughter's a lot more confident and hopefully going forward, she will be doing the unboxing with me um, every month. Um, and hopefully she'll take more of a center stage next time rather than myself. Um, and apart from that, that's it really. Um, hopefully you enjoyed that update. Thank you again for watching and I hope to see you again next time. Thank you, bye-bye.